So what's up guys? Um, season 12, as I said, was going to probably kick off within two weeks or more. And here we are. And I kind of felt the time was right to do this. Last week, obviously, I did, wasn't most likely going to be back because, you know, I just got back from my vacation and you know, it's kind of good to kind of just put your feet up and relax and not have to worry about something, you know, for that particular week or anything for that matter. So I kind of just took a few, you know, a couple weeks off, just kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to just relax. And then last Wednesday passed by and then there was a bunch of things that began occurring and I'm just like, uh so it's one of those things that I had to eventually bring myself back into and um, one of the things that was going on this past week was um, the Nuga shooting, the Chattanooga shooting now the funny thing is, is I'm going to get into this myself a, a lot about it because there's been a lot of that Islamophobia from from the right wing forces and by relig Christian religious extremists and uber nationalists and you know people that are just overly patriotic and I have no problem with patriotism I have no problem with some forms of nationalism it's when you're overtly patriotic like overly enthusiastically patriotic and when you're ultra-nationalistic, that's when it starts to have a bit of Nazi Germany to it. And that's when I start getting a little irritated. And one of those things is, especially when it concerns people that it gets so blatantly Islamophobic, that's when I end up having to take a stand. And in fact, one of the things that I would even go so far to say, and that I will talk probably a few bits about in this, is the, the comparisons I see between Nuga and the Charlotte Church shooting and the fact that one person is labeled a terrorist while the other one's just labeled a loner. Extremely hypocritical for a country that, you know, is so quick to judge Muslims, but when it's a white person, particularly one who's Anglo-Saxon, you know, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, it's when I start having a lot of irritations. So this will also in um, I've also posted a few things on my Facebook page for you guys to look at. Um, and if you and I'm actually going to incorporate some of those onto my onto the video today, so that we can kind of discuss this personally, to, you know, on that level. So yeah. Basically, my whole opinion on this is that while looking into the Chattanooga shooting and the man who committed this act of violence, and I say violence because the term terrorism to me seemed slightly incorrect and it's overly used, and again, given the fact that, you know, the Charlotte Church shooter wasn't given the label terrorist, I don't see why I need to give this man the label of terrorist either. Unless, of course, people want to retract that statement and start calling the Charlotte Church shooter a terrorist, then I'll start calling this man a terrorist as well. Until then, we're going to just call, him, call this an act of violence. Now, the man who committed this act of violence was not part of ISIS. That's one of the first key things that we need to get the fuck out the way right right here. He was not ISIS. He was inspired by ISIS. He was rather inspired by their acts and was a lone gunman. And indeed, he was a radical fundamentalist. But part of ISIS, and it, as it currently has, he does not seem like he has any real major ties to these terrorist organizations. He was just a lone, radicalized nutcase, just like Dylan Roof, who committed an act of heinous violence. However, Fox News, with their insidious fucking lies and jumping the gun sort of mentality, and their just frankly racist and bigoted viewpoints, 
jumped the gun a few days ago after this all happened, and Americans failed miserably in the social in the social aspect, and I believe them. Seriously, you will believe anything Fox News will tell you, even if you're not even a Fox News. You will believe anything as long as it's presented well, won't you? I mean, seriously. Fox News, the one, the, the the group that has about as much journalistic fucking integrity as probably, you literally have just as much journalistic integrity as, well, John Oliver. <laughs> and frankly, I would actually say John Oliver has slight more integrity than Fox News. I mean, the whole point to all of this is that they don't the, satire sites make fun of them for a reason because and they make they put out bogus stories and stuff like that for a lot of different reasons because american people are very no offense but they are gullible to a lot of different things and the fact that as long as it's presented well we will follow any lame ass fucking thought that you know is presented to us and fox news plays very candidly onto that and the problem was, is that Fox News then silently ends up backtracking after they realized that this man was not part of ISIS, and they made a huge mistake. However, they just continued to stoke the fires of Islamophobic fervor. Folks, let's just get one thing out of the way, and I know it's a cliche that I use every time I pretty much do a video where I'm having to defend an entire fucking group of people not all terrorists are Muslim and not all Muslims are terrorists can we fucking figure that out please I mean there is more terrorism I think domestically that comes from Christian extremists than comes from Islamic extremists and I think an actual issue from the Christ, uh, uh, more of a threat from the Christian right than we do from the Islamic right. I mean, we do live in a Christian hegemonic country, so we're going to face more attacks and more issues from them than we are from, you know, someone who's a fundamentalist Muslim. And frankly, if we even look at the whole thing, they have, they have terrorized Boston, New, New York, Chattanooga, and what, failed to set off anything, off any other things? I mean, we can go with the Fort Hood shooting, too, if we want to, but I, I consider Fort Hood to kind of be a mild act of violence compared to what this man did and compared to what, you know, happened in Boston and New York. And it's one of those things where I think Fort Hood's just a bad example. Now, it's one of those things that I'm just... I, I always end up having to use that cliche that not all Muslims are terrorists, not all terrorists are Muslim. I know I say that a lot. But there is a grand point to that. Because it goes to show... It's one of those things that we need to, again, think logically... And get rid of the and kind of move past that that Islamic phobia that Islamophobia, to realize that m most terrorism comes from the Christian right. Christianity has been waging a fucking war against well Islam and other religions for two thousand fucking years, all because they feel their power always being threatened. And when one group of people ha feels their power being threatened by another, what do you think's going to happen? And then because of that, it starts this, you know, butting of heads that has continued. You know, you can blame Islam for all the damn things that go on, but it's frankly Christianity's fault, predominantly very right-wing Christianity, that tends to pretty much cause a lot of these issues. You know, at least historically. I don't know necessarily about how it does now, except maybe U.S. imperialism, but 
basically, basically, let's just put it this way. Historically, Christianity has waged war against a lot of people. Muslims, Jewish people, pagans, for instance. There's been a lot of different crusades against people just to pretty much instill this, you know, this holy dominion on the world. And essentially, that's what a lot of fundamentalists uh, in the Islamic sect are trying to do too. They're trying to create this theological hegemonic domination on the world that Christianity has held on the world for so many years. But frankly, it's just one of those things where it's just all it's going to lead to is, you know, petty bickering to, from anything from petty bickering to blowing each other the fuck up. So, yes, there's there's a level of, you know, insanity that goes along with, well, frankly, any religion. But I digress. Basically, I'm just really irritated and tired of having to reiterate this whole issue to a bunch of people who refuse to listen. And then I'm the jackass because I'm supporting terrorism, and it's, or I'm a terrorist sympathizer, or I'm a traitor. And simply, it's be, so I'm all of those things simply because I, you know, happen to distinguish the difference between religious fundamentalism and, well, actual religion. And I find it funny we are quick to demonize Muslims after a radical fundamentalist shoots up or blows up a bunch of people, but we don't bat an eye when a some crazy ass white Anglo Saxon Protestant kid ends up shooting up a, an entire church of African-American people. It just seems kind of hypocritical and shows that very white supremacist, Christian hegemonic hold that the govern, government and media has on us. I mean, it's really kind of interesting how I'm labeled as a, as a jackass, how, how I'm called all these different things simply because I happen to raise my voice in opposition to Islamophobia, something I'm guaranteed to under the First Amendment. Just saying. It's, it's just really sad, and I'm not defending this man's actions by any means. Let's just get that out of the way. I am really sorry. I am saddened by the losses of those involved. My sympathies go out to the people and the, the to the people that were involved in their families, but quit demonizing an entire group of people for the radicalization and fundamentalism of a very, very small minority of that population. Now, I'm going to start showing a couple photos here, the, a couple posters that I saw on Facebook, and. Um, and, and as I get to, and as after each one, I'm going to basically give my opinion on each. So, without much further ado, here are the here are these lovely Islamophobic posters. Islamophobia is really strong with this one and those who support it. There is a fair difference here. While yes, both ISIS and Al-Qaeda flags and Taliban flags and anything that basically has to deal with any group that was basically created because of the stupidity of you know U.S. imperialism, at least in my opinion, are the same thing as the Confederate flag. Yes, I am comparing ISIS and Al-Qaeda flags to the Confederate flag. Deal with that as you will. I, you know, that's just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with it. If you don't want to, that's your prerogative. But anyway, ISIS, while the ISIS and Al-Qaeda flags are, at least in my opinion, the same as the Confederate flag, by banning all flags, though, representing Islam, would mean, one, banning of several flags of the world nations, that which would be a major First Amendment violation of free speech, and banning any sort of flag or symbolism of, is, of 
that anything representing Islam would also be a violation of the First Amendment's uh, freedom of religious expression. Kind of should look at the Constitution a little closer, because that is kind of part of it, so we can't be doing that. Because not all terrorists are Muslim and not all Muslims are terrorists, with the same logic as basically banning you know anything that has to do with Islam, let us then ban the Christian flag or anything that represents Christianity for the extremists that give them a bad name. But I don't see any wasps advocating that. No, it's all an attack on Islam for the, ex the actions of a few select group of fascist idiots, or in this case, a one lone fascist nut job. Now this one right here, is, I will fairly actually give this one partially to the right. However, I would prefer to call what this man did as a violently criminal act and not terrorism. I mean, with that very same logic, the white supremacist shooter in Charlotte should be labeled as a terrorist, but where are the masses of people crying terrorism on that? Where are the masses of people crying terrorism from this white gunman that shot a bunch of people in Charlotte. Both are were based on a very extremist and fundamentalist religious fervor, so it's only fair, right? Just saying. In addition, they supposedly had ties or influences to terrorist organizations. The Nuga shooter influenced uh, uh, supposedly by ISIS and fundamentalist Islam, and the church shooter by Stormfront and neo-Nazism and fundamentalist Christianity. Same crap, different can, folks. And if any right-winger, any right-winger, cares to argue with me that there is any difference, that there is no difference between the two, if anybody wants to argue why an Islamic fundamentalist Arab man is labeled a terrorist and a white supremacist Christian extremist is not, then I will graciously let you enlighten me. Because from my viewpoint, Chattanooga is no different than Charlotte. I think if we are going to label the Nuga shooter as a terrorist, we should do the same to Dylan Roof. Because the lo because with the logic here, they are bo either both terrorists or they are both crazy loners who shot up a bunch of folks. The fact that the victims in one were black churchgoers and the other were simply ser were servicemen and women is not relevant. They were all human beings that were victims. Plain and simple. Lastly, I will end on this. I really love how people will get pissed at the fundamentalists that are in their religion, particularly Christianity. But they don't seem to understand why that fundamentalism and you know why the fundamentalists and fundamentalism there obviously you know exists. There obviously is a fundamental problem if there is fundamentalism within your, well, religion. Both Islam and Christianity have this problem. Judaism has this problem. Buddhism has this problem. Pretty much any religion that you have has its level. Even paganism, I will even go say, has this problem because we actually have, sadly, I will have to say, especially in Norse religion, we typically tend to have a lot of people that have white supremacist leanings and there's a lot of problems that I have with you know that sort of that ultra right wing sort of fervor within you know within my religious community and and I'm also not saying that just to pick on the Norse religion because we have religious extremists that are, you know, that can be eclectic. We have religious fur, uh, fundamentalists in, in the Roman pantheon, in the Egyptian pantheon, Greek pantheon. It, it really doesn't, in fact, 
I would even go so far to say is that there's probably people that believe in Greek pantheism and who are probably part who could possibly be part of like Golden Dawn. You know, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where people that have this it doesn't matter what religion you are extremism and fundamentalism is not discriminatory and the fact is is that the people that get so pissed at the fundamentalism that exists within their religion need to kind of take a closer look to understand why there's so much fundamentalism involved now granted while it may not be discriminatory there is less fundamentalism obviously within my religious community as there would be in others for example probably the largest number of extremists come from the christian and the islamic sect however those are still a fair minority within that group however the difference between the two is that there's a a decline actually in fundamentalist Islam where there is actually a rise in fundamentalist Christianity you really don't have to look too far into the American right-wing political system to, before you actually start finding fundamentalist and extremist religious nutcases who think it's their built their duty before God to fucking go out and march along the Santa Monica Pier or Comic Con even and annoy people while they're just trying to go about their day as a person that was just in Santa Monica about a week or so ago where religious Christian religious extremists were marching up the pier and making my blood boil while I was trying to have lunch kind of irritates the soul just a little bit so it's one of those things where I just have you know I had to make this video and I had to make this particular stance on the Chattanooga shooting it was a sad event folks just like Charlotte it's a sad event another group of people have been killed at the hands of a gunman but the way I look at it to go about demonizing a man, one man for his extremist views and calling him a terrorist and not calling another man with extremist views a terrorist simply because of their differences of religion, their race, and the way they, you know, kind of the different views that they went to go about it should not really be of any relevance here. It's the way I look at it. I call it an act of violence, since that that the um, that what's his name, Muhammad, um, taking its time here. <laughs> but anyway, while it's loading, let me just kind of elaborate further. The fact that. The, again, one man happens to be labeled a terrorist while another man has happened to be labeled as a loner or a shooter or just a, you know, this one bad apple or whatever the case is doesn't really strike a whole lot of fairness to me. Especially considering that I guarantee you that the, that the, that the Arab man was not treated as fairly as the white supremacist asshole that shot up nine people in Charlotte. In fact, it, it's already pretty, you know, common knowledge at this point that the Charlotte church shooter was driven by Burger fucking King and gotten and given food by police. Do you think that the Arab man got that? No. The Arab man was probably taken directly to a federal holding cell detained and want and asked all a bunch of these questions about why he did it meanwhile dylan roof gets to stop off at a fucking burger king and he's a white fucking supremacist where's the fucking fairness in that and i'm again i'm not defending the the i'm not defending the nougat shooter at all i'm simply pissed at the unfairness that's given towards an entire group of people based upon one asshole's actions while another asshole is allowed to fucking 
be treated as if he, this is just, you know, was just like a robbery or something. It's like, seriously? Really? Now, I know there's going to be a whole bunch of fucking ultra-nationalistic and sort of people getting pissed off at me over this video. And frankly, I'm sorry if you don't see my point of thinking. But there's a lot of logical reasoning that I did put into this video and a lot of thinking that I did while up late at night on Facebook trying to type out a response to all this latent Islamophobia. And that is essentially what this is. There's, you know, there's absolutely no phobia towards white Anglo-Saxon Protestant assholes like the like Dylan Roof. There's no condemnation to Stormfront or the KKK or any of these other white supremacist and Christian extremist organizations when crazy shit like that goes off. But as soon as one person who identifies as, you know, as a radical Islamist or a radical fun or a Islamic fundamentalist, as soon as that one person commits an act of violence against the American people, all of a sudden it's not just him, but an entire religious group of people that are fucking demonized for it. Where is the fairness in that, America? Really, where is the fairness in that? Because I really don't see it. Like, condemn the actions of both people condemn the actions of the extremists that they may or may not represent or are influenced by. But do not condemn an entire group of people for the actions of one jarhead. Now, really, it's just fucking... That's my personal opinion. I mean, you don't see a whole group of white people being condemned for the actions of Dylan Roof. You know, as much as Stormfront wants to fucking believe that, there's going to be this retaliation against white people. Frankly, there should be a retaliation, you know, against white people. Because look at what just happened to the entire group of, of Arab and, and Islamic people after this man. And there's no fucking outcry whenever, you know, whenever a white person shoots up a fucking school or shoots up a fucking church or you know, does all this sort of crap, where's the outcry on that? Especially when it concerns white supremacism and neo-Nazism. I mean, this dude had basically had influences from Stormfront. He may not have actually had ties to groups of these people that we can find, but he has influences from the KKK, from Stormfront, from the peop uh, from the pioneers for Europe or whatever the fuck that organization is called, all these white supremacist organizations. But there's not a single condemnation for that, and this kid's just treated as if he's just like some robbery suspect. He's driven to fucking Burger King or McDonald's or whatever it is, and given food by police when a, a when an Arab person that commits an act of violence like that is thrown right into a fucking federal prison cell. Both of them deserve to just be taken to fucking out into the fucking desert and just shot. But no, one gets better treatment than the other, which again shows the complete white supremacy, Christian hegemonic bullshit that dominates the United States. And frankly, that's why I get so pissed over it. That's why I get so irritated over it. It's like one man who commits an act of violence against an entire group of people gets off on, you know, is basically given such lavish, you know, sort of attention and stuff like that. He's given, you know, basically given a cushy sort of, you know, treatment on his way to jail. And then the media doesn't even talk about it after that. But one man commits an act of violence who happens to be of a different religious background than most Americans and has different extremist views and happens to be of a different race that, you know, happens to be of a particular group of people that happens, you know, to pretty much be by our government standards an enemy. He commits one act of violence against these people and yet he's 
com- and, and yet there's the media will talk about it for days, probably for weeks, and this man is just carted off. Is just carted off. It's like no, they both deserve the same fucking punishment, and that's and again I say it proudly. Dylan Roof and uh, Dylan Roof and uh, Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz, they both deserve to be taken out into the middle of the desert and shot. That is my personal opinion because both of their actions were extremist terrorist actions, frankly. But since people are so insistent on calling Dylan Roof just a lone gunman, a loner, a sh- you know, committing a heinous act of violence, then I'm going to just go ahead and call Abdul Aziz the same thing. It's only fair, right? I mean, seriously, we're just going to completely, you know, treat another group of pe- another an entire other person a different way than another group person who committed the exact fucking crime. The exact same fucking crime. And then along with it, the fact that you will demonize an entire group of people just for the actions of that one person. Yeah, that that, that really says a lot for American intelligence. That really says a lot for the American society. That we are such a racist, Islamophobic group of people that we cannot see past the di- that we cannot see past our prejudices and everything else, and understand that the, that these two men committed the exact same fucking crimes, but they are treated completely different from one another. There's a reason why I keep repeating myself, just so maybe it'll stick in the heads and the minds of most of people, both in America and abroad, at just how hypocritical and absolutely asinine this is. I, I'm just... I'm thoroughly irritated. You know, there's a lot of other things that I want to talk about, but the Chattanooga shooting itself and the Islamophobia that has been going on has been what's weighing heavily on my mind the last couple days. The 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 way that Americans have treated this man, the Abdul Aziz, compared to Dylan Roof, it's completely, it's completely just. It, it, it really is thoroughly irritating. I mean, honestly, the whole issue that went on in this whole case itself was four people, technically as of yesterday, five people were killed after a rampage that happened on Sunday. Now, Again, this man, uh, Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz, had opened fire on a group of people. He opened fire, killed five, four people initially, and then another fifth m- member, a U.S. sailor, ended up dying, uh, I believe, on Monday morning. Now, or was it Mon- not Monday morning, but it was... Um, Saturday morning, I believe it was. Sunday morning, I don't know. Anyway, it was... um, But anyway, a fifth person ended up passing away from his injuries. How is that any different than the nine people whose lives were tragically cut short at the hands of Dylan Roof? I really don't see a difference. I don't see a difference in the logical thinking of Americans when you consider that both these men, again, had very extremist views. While one was more religiously motivated, religiously fundamentalistly motivated than the other, does not hold a whole significant amount of relevance. The fact is, both these men, the, both these men, had far-right-reaching extremist views. 
one was a fundamentalist and probably Arab nationalist sort of sort of asshole and one was a white supremacist neo-nazi jughead that fucking had most likely had a very extremist viewpoint on Christianity I don't really see a difference here both were extremist viewpoints and should be treated the same way and it just really kind of gets to me that a lot of people happen to be focusing just on the the matter of this man this uh, on Abdul Aziz's religion and his ethnicity the very fact of the matter is with his his ethnicity has nothing to do with what he did his religion technically does not have anything to do with what he did it is the extremism the fundamentalism of what of his views that is important to what he did just the same as Dylan Roof has the same thing going for him his race does not have a propensity towards murder his religion does not necessarily have a, a propensity towards murder it is the fundamentalist aspects that has the propensity towards murder it is the extremist viewpoints that these two men have that have the propensity towards murdering people and that is what we need to really focus on we do not need to focus on the race we do not need to focus on the on the religion as a whole but rather focus on the extremist viewpoints that these men had and possibly the fundamentalist religious fervor that they had within that within those confines we can then begin to process the psychology of how these men think and why they did what they did and most likely like Dylan Roof I'm sure that they'll find that Abdul Aziz is probably mentally ill in some way I just don't really see any difference between the Charlotte the, the Charlotte Church shooting and the Chattanooga uh, the Chattanooga murders I really don't and again, I'm sorry if you're if you if you're one of those nationalistic, pa overly patriotic Americans who's, you know, pissed off at me over this, you know, because you may have had a serviceman or servicewoman involved in this situation, or if you are a serviceman or a servicewoman, I'm sorry if you feel indifferent and irritated by what I'm saying in this video, but there's a but you could probably at least to some extent whether you agree or disagree with me at all understand my logic what in what I'm saying here if you don't then you really need to take a good look at yourself you really need to take a good look at the people in society around you because what is going on here is really kind of it, 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 the, what's really going on here is unfair when you consider that again this is the same fucking thing that just happened a month ago in Charlotte same thing different asshole again as I end this video and I don't know how long this video is I'm pretty sure it's going to be a short one but um Again, I do offer my condolences to the families. I do offer my best wishes for the future. This is a horrible act of violence that has happened. It is an act of terrorism, much that it is that the Charlotte shooting was an act of terrorism. But we'll just go right now with this was a horrible act of violence that could have been prevented. But, let us not forget that this is all the more reason to strengthen our resolve, to try and, you know, protect ourselves and stuff like that. It's just one of those things where, you know, it's a learning experience. Again, my condolences to the families, my sympathies, 
and I really do hope for the best to come out of all of this. And to the dude that fucking shot up a whole bunch of people in Chattanooga, go fuck yourself, dude. You can go join Dylan Roof, and maybe one of you guys can be bunk buddies together. <laughs> <laughs>